You're watching Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo. Hello and a mighty fine welcome to y'all to the great state of Texas. Today's video will show you what it's like to visit the Fort Worth Zoo. If you're watching as a first time visitor, typically we explore one section at a time, but today you'll get a taste for every section the zoo has to offer to convince you to visit and to prepare you for that visit. Instead of just giving you a simple breakdown, I will be rating and ranking each exhibit attraction based on its immersion, convenience, and entertainment for guest experience, educational and conservation value, and more importantly, exhibit quality. Ratings will mostly be determined with an objective perspective from a casual zoo visitor's point of view, just looking for a fun place to go, and not from someone who's obsessed with zoos. So with that, let's get started. Right out of the gate is one of the zoo's several flamingo ponds, home to more than 70 of these pink birds from two species. And it's right next to our first major attraction, the world of primates. What's the best way to make the most fun exhibit ever? Put a bunch of ADH ridden animals together in one spot. You can find six primates, four apes, two monkeys, and one really large exhibit for the Eastern Bongo, an antelope, just in case you get your hoofed animals confused with primates. One of the benefits of having a zoo in Texas is you're able to keep your animals pretty much outside year round, but just in case, there's more to see on the inside. The outer walls are lined with your usual indoor primate pens, but the central space is a hot atrium. This is the former indoor gorilla area, which I thought wasn't bad at all, but these days it's a lot more lush, and now the entire building is pretty much just one giant walkthrough aviary. Now what score does it deserve? Well, it opened in 1992 and it doesn't look like much has changed. The outdoor spaces are a little small, and the colonists don't have access to the great outdoors. World of Primates deserves an 8 for guest experience, 6 for educational value, and another 6 for exhibit quality for a grand total of 20 out of 30 points. It took me hours to get through the World of Primates. Not because it's so big, but before you even make it around the entire circle, you're invited to transport yourself into the African savanna. Fort Worth makes a fun first impression, but not so much a modern one. And you could say that about most of the zoo, until they kicked off a wilder vision. The $130 million master plan. If you came here in 2017 and came back today, you wouldn't even recognize the place. And it all started with the African savanna. Some lifelong viewers might be thinking, oh, here we go, he's about to say how much he hates African exhibits. But not so fast, my friends. I couldn't think of a reason not to love this. The designers played it safe and kept it simple, and sometimes simple is better. It almost has the full African savanna package. It's not exactly immersive, but the theming is there. I like how it takes you away from the main zoo. The signage is hands-on more ways than one, and it looks like the designers really want you to know a lot about rhinos. My only critique, the flamingo and meerkat exhibits are a little small, so exhibit quality gets a 9, guest experience is an 8, and education gets another 9, making the African savanna one of the zoo's best exhibits. Next up on the zoo's Wilder Vision checklist was to give their Asian elephants anything other than a small moated dust bowl. Elephant Springs unveiled in 2021 and there aren't many elephant complexes out there that come with a theme with emphasis on the word springs. If there's something Fort Worth does right, it's water features. You're very briefly put in the middle of a fishing village. There's a boat that looks like it's ready to sink at any moment. Floating barrels and more outboard motors you'll ever find at a zoo. Guests are shown two habitats disguised as one, but there's at least four more spaces behind the scenes. Hundreds of thousands of gallons separates you from these giants, but with some pocket change, you can grab their attention by shooting a high power water stream. If that's not a close enough encounter for you, they do have keeper encounters in the small amphitheater off to the right. And on top of that, Elephant Springs has not one, but two exhibits for the Indian rhinoceros. 
If I had to nitpick, it would have been nice to see the other exhibits in some way, although I do get that privacy is important. Just as long as you get to be able to see baby Travis. So I'll give it a 9 for guest experience, 8 for education, and 7 for exhibit quality for a total of 24 out of 30 points. As soon as you see the rhinos, you're pretty much already in the Wilder Vision's third, newest, and so far in my opinion, the most fun phase. It starts at the lowest point in the zoo and brings you up to its peak. So it's a bit of a climb, but obviously worth it. I've been to nearly 50 zoos, but I've never seen a better combo of large predators, including what so many claim to be the only pure African leopards in an AZA zoo. Not really, but we'll get to that later. The school bus connected to the lions is a nice touch, because usually it's just a small safari truck. Overall, the quality is good, but again, there's a few enclosures that are just a little on the small side. So the verdict is, guest experience gets a 10, education a 9, and 8 for exhibit quality for a total of 27 points. The middle top part of the Fort Worth Zoo that I'll creatively call the Middle Zoo is a long narrow strip comprising of five sections that I'll rate as one. Sounds unfair, but they're all small and they all look like they were built around the same time. Right after Predators is another walkthrough wading bird aviary full of even more flamingos and other African birds. Before Wilder Vision came along, one of this place's most talked about features was the Raptor Canyon, which is exactly how it sounds. You're invited to walk in between some of the world's largest, most beautiful, intimidating birds of prey. Some I've never even seen before and some I've never even heard of before. And two of the exhibits are connected on either side, so you can walk right under them. A couple of smaller aviaries and parrots on a stick later and the Australian outback is in view. I found Australian brush turkeys, even more parrots on a stick, and some weird furry bird that I've also never seen before. And this actually used to be the koala exhibit, and so did this tropical reef aquarium. To answer your question, yes, yes, they do have kangaroos, along with penguins. You can get up close and personal with rock hoppers on the inside and African penguins on the outside who actually prefer the Texas weather. Now, the middle zoo isn't Fort Worth's strongest area. The exhibits are stuck in the 90s, and unless they're rescues, no zoo should be able to do this anymore. It was still cool to get this close to penguins, and I do love their ways of getting people to respect sharks, but overall, guest experience gets a 7, education gets a 6, and a 5 for exhibit quality, for a total of 18 out of 30 points. Okay, I finally found it. Probably the most non-Disney, Disney Zoo exhibit in America, Texas Wild. For marketing purposes, a lot of zoos will say their exhibit transports them to another world. I know I'd be saying that Texas Wild transports you to the state that you're already in, but this seven acre miniature city paints a picture of the state's civilian and wild landscapes. Like Florida, the Lone Star State has one of the most diverse range of creatures that rules the land. Freshwater, saltwater, underground, and the sky. It's not every day you find upside down jellyfish in the same themed attraction as a white-tailed deer. There's also prairie dogs, gators, otters, a snapping turtle that actually moves, and what felt like about a hundred other things. And by the way, when you get to the Gulf Coast aviary, don't get yourself fooled. This pelican is not a statue. Texas Wild is almost perfect. Almost. Everything was going as swell as the gravy on Meemaw's biscuits until I came across the coyotes, mountain lion, and jaguars, whose homes are about as small as a studio apartment. But I think changes are coming for at least one of them as we speak. I don't want to give the zoo a pass for these, but Texas Wild isn't just the most thematic exhibit outside of Walt's place, but it's so educational I almost wanted to call this a school. Even the humor was on point, and zoos rarely ever pull that off. In the end, Exhibit Tree will get a 5, but Guest Experience and Educational Value will get a 10 from me for 25 out of 30 points. And that leaves us with Mola, one of the goats of the zoo world, except 
it doesn't have goats. It has whatever's pretty and freaky all at once in the animal kingdom, but mostly it's a reptile house. The Museum of Living Art is 30,000 square feet of wonder, and it just never ends. 150 on display species from 5,000 total animals. If you know nothing about reptiles and amphibians, you might as well consider yourself an amateur expert after walking in and around MOLA since it has both indoor and outdoor features. While the Dallas Zoo has it set up so you can dine with the lions, MOLA lets you dine with two giant crocodilians. It's one of the most prestigious exhibits ever built, but it's not perfect. Some of the terrariums are a little small, and I personally think it'd be best to find even smaller residents for most of the outdoor stuff. It still deserves a 10 for guest experience, 10 for educational and conservation value, and a 9 for habitat quality. With 29 points, the Museum of Living Art is without a doubt the Fort Worth Zoo's premier animal attraction. With the final scores, here is a scientifically conclusive list of the Fort Worth Zoo's exhibits in order from greatest to okay. And it's okay, you, you can tell me I'm wrong. Years before I even decided to come here, this zoo looked like one of the least appealing places to visit. With the wilder vision, obviously things have really turned around. I won't say exactly where it ranks on my list yet, but I will say it's definitely in my top 20. Would I recommend that you visit the Dallas-Fort Worth area just for this zoo? No, not yet. There's no opening date for it, but I don't recommend you come here until the Wilder Visions Phase 4 Forests and Jungles of the World is complete. So that will do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you're a local, please tell me what I missed. Stay tuned for the first Fort Worth tour, and thank you all for watching.